And welcome uh, back to the Steve Molesberg Show, ladies and gentlemen. I want you to hear uh, Rand Paul, uh, a little more of Rand Paul. We played a little bit uh, for Donald Rumsfeld um, talking about his lawsuit against the, uh, the, Clinton, the Obama administration regarding the NSA. This is cut 45. Let's listen to 45. Our founders never intended for Americans to trust their government. Our entire Constitution was predicated on the notion that government was a necessary evil to be restrained and minimized as much as possible. When we learned that the NSA was collecting the phone data of every American last June, it posed a serious constitutional question. Do we no longer have a Fourth Amendment? The Fourth Amendment was included in the Constitution precisely to prevent the issuing of general warrants in which blanket authority is given to government to spy on citizens at will. All right, uh, so there you have it. The lawsuit has officially been filed, something he's been talking about for a while. Joining us now is our friend Lee Sweel, Fox News legal analyst, author of that new thriller, Snapshot. Good to talk to you again, Lee. Hey, Steve. Great to speak with you. Thank you. All right, so let's talk about this, uh, this lawsuit here. Does it have a, a shot in you know where? And, yeah. and even if it did, I mean, it's going to take a, This isn't like something he's trying to get fast-tracked to the Supreme no. Court. This, is, this could take years. It could definitely take years. But the problem I see, the basic problem I see with it is making it a class action suit. How do you show that the NSA collected meta, metadata from each person in the potential class? Um, that fact is going to be a very hard thing to show, and it would provide the judges with an opportunity to decide the case without even touching on the merits of the case. So uh, I think the class action suit is is really a, a you know the Achilles heel to this one and as you're talking about you know what's going to get in front of the Supreme Court there are a couple of other cases that are in head, ahead of the line Clayman versus o Obama right. and the ACLU versus NSA so and those have come out in different in different ways um, so I just kind of think, you know, I understand uh, uh, Senator Paul is incensed about this and, and upset and all that, um, but I'm not sure the class action was the way to go. Now explain explain the, the problem with the class action. In other words, he's claiming that, um, you know, uh, almost every American citizen or certainly mi millions of them have had their, their phone numbers and conversation numbers and records taken by the NSA. So what, what, what's the problem, that he needs people to come forward with him and he doesn't have them or he needs to prove that? What's the problem you, you with pretty, the class action? I mean, a class action, you pretty much you don't have to need to have the, the actual bodies in the courtroom or signing up, although that helps if they can sign up. Uh, but you have to show that every person in, your cla in that class was actually affected. You have to show those kind of facts. And I, don't, I think that's going to be very hard. Um, or, you know, wants to be in the class, for example, even if your metadata was, uh, you know, swept up somehow, you may not want to be in the class. You have to opt out of the class. I mean, it's very, I, I'm, I'm frankly confused, Steve, as to why he did a class action other than, you know, it sounds good for sound bites and, and for television, but um, I'm well, not well, sure it makes a lot of sense legally. Well, did he need, see, I'm curious about how a, a, a senator could sue the administration because we... we he wouldn't have standing. What, well, that's what, the thing. Administration, because we... we he wouldn't have standing. What, well, that's what, the thing. Okay, yeah. so yeah, okay, so he's suing the administration, so if, it, if he did not have standing... So my question to you is, standing. how does he have standing now? Is it because it's a class action? He's, he would have to say that the people in this class are all damaged, and so that they, if they, you know, not just Senator Paul himself as a senator, has, right. you know, but they all have standing as a mass. Um, so that's why... Exactly. Probably he went for class action, right. otherwise he couldn't even bring the suit. Probably not. Not, okay. as, not gotcha. as just a senator out there saying, I'm, I'm unhappy with this. <laughs> gotcha. No, I, I hear you. Um, I, have, you have you been following this case down in Florida, this uh, Stand Your Ground? The, uh, I have been, The yes. loud yep. music? Yes, yeah, because I've seen been. you talking about it on Fox, so yeah. I, I knew the answer, but I thought I'd ask you anyway, because <laughs> yes. um, I, I, I didn't want to blindside you. I've some from some, since this morning, you know. You yeah. Know. <laughs> now, now, this case is crazy. Now, I watched the, a little bit of the testimony of the uh, Michael Dunn, the defendant, who's accused of killing the, uh, the uh, African-American uh, teenager in the, right. in the car with all his friends when he asked him to shut the music down. He claims he was threatened, cursed at, claims he thought he saw the barrel of a gun, a pipe. Um, so he went back to his car, got a gun, and then kept firing. And even after the car pulled away, went back. And right. I, so when he was testifying, I said to myself, you know what? I think I thought he was toast because he didn't call the police afterward. He didn't call the police, right. And, and went, went to get pizza, went, went back home right. with his girlfriend. So I thought that this guy has no chance. Then I'm watching him saying he's, his demeanor is pretty good. He's probably going to convince one juror. But then he claimed he told his girlfriend about, the, you know, I, I shot these guys because they had a gun. And his girlfriend, his fiance, was so nervous. And you could tell she was 
she, she was like about to have a heart attack on right. the stand. And she said, nope, he never mentioned a gun. He never mentioned no. a threat. He never mentioned anything. Now, so how could this guy even have a case? Well, it's the defense. I mean, he's got to put something. He doesn't have to put something yeah. on. But he, but he, you know, this is, this is Florida, and the stand your ground law applies, and self-defense applies. In fact, um, when I was talking about this earlier, across my wire was coming news that uh, there are groups in, uh, in Florida that are trying to even make the stand your ground law stricter, stronger. So, um, you know, it's, it's, the only, it's really the only defense he had because he, he fired off 10 shots into that car with those teenagers in it, you know, killing one of the teenagers. 10, th- 10 shots. That's, you know, and for a lot of people, a lot of people's estimation is hardly self-defense. And then the fact, as you said, he left the scene, he went to the hotel, uh, got the pizza, and really didn't call the cops until it was on the media. And that doesn't look good. And then the third thing, of course, is the girlfriend saying, no, he didn't say anything about a gun. So yeah. you, have to, you have to be in fear of imminent harm or bodily you know, bodily. Yeah, threat. which he might have been in. And I guess, I guess if, a, if I'm a defense lawyer summing up, I'm going to say that, you know, what difference does it make if he told the girlfriend? The difference is, you know, not what he did after, not that he didn't call the police, but, you know, he at that time he fired because he felt he was in yeah. danger. And I have the prosecutor, I'd say, you know, you've got to, at, at that point, the defense actually does have a burden of proving something. How do you, how is the defense proven there, that there was any um, reasonable threat of any kind of harm or danger? Right. That, but that's, that's kind of a, a aside from what he did afterward, I guess. True. true. Uh, although it doesn't look good for him, certainly. No, As I said, I thought he were, was toast. If yeah. If you were so upset and you had just, you know, Right. gun pointed at your face or thought you had a gun and you were in this altercation, wouldn't the first thing you do, you know, yell, cops, and get the cops or right. call 911 right afterwards? First of all, the other thing is, too, this is not a legal perspective on it, but it's just, to me, an extension of road rage out there. I right. mean, you know, really, I mean, back give me the, off give me the road rage out there. I right. mean, you know, really, I mean, back give me the, off. Give me the, I love the least perspective yeah, as opposed the, to the legal perspective. The least perspective is yeah. just, you know, you're going to music loud and they're teenagers. You don't like it, you know, so get your soda and go. I mean, right, it's right. ridiculous. Well, fire yeah. once if you're afraid really afraid and they go away then let them keep going and then yeah just i mean the stuff it, it, it reminds me of that case uh recently where the guy's at a movie theater and yeah somebody yeah like, well, the t- a cell phone and he you know pops him off is I mean, that down like, yeah i forget what is that down florida also I, you know i almost was saying colorado yeah maybe i, I don't know yeah, well you, you associate colorado with, with theater the by the way right. uh, i should tell you this lisa the um, uh, the senate has passed a clean debt ceiling oh, okay. bill as well. They got the uh, 60 plus votes, actually okay. 67 to 31, despite the fact that Ted Cruz uh, vowed he would uh, not let it go through. It, it did go they through. They pretty much said they were going to do that yesterday. And, um, and they, you know what? They want to get out before the bad storm hits. I, I guess that's what, yeah, I guess that's the reason. And uh, you're a baseball fan, right? Uh, a little bit. Okay, well, now you could be one. Make believe. Okay. Say, yeah, uh, yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah. Derek see. Jeter, his last year of playing baseball will be this coming season, wow. 2014. Okay. So the real end of a real I could tell Lisa's so heartbroken yeah, she has so nothing, hard to, say. <laughs> nothing uh, to say. But for she's going to leave us and go cry for a while. There you go. Uh, see, listen, you know me so well. H- how's the book doing? How, how is the, the, the exciting thriller Snapshot? Snapshot is doing great, thanks to your wonderful interview that we did a few weeks ago. I really appreciate that. No, that was, uh, that was my pleasure. Okay. Hey, great to talk to you. Thanks. Thanks for making the time. All right, you got it. Take All right, care. bye. Lisa Wheel, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Fox News legal analyst uh, right here on the Steve Malzberg Show. Uh, when we come back, boy, what? You, Donald Rumsfeld, Lise Wheel. Next is Mary Madeline. Uh, then we're going to talk uh, either this hour or, or, or next hour uh, after Mary Madeline, Larry King. I mean, it, it, it doesn't end. It's like an all-star lineup. Baseball again. Get it? I'm getting the sports feel in there. Uh, we'll talk more about Derek Jeter uh, a little bit later on. Uh, but uh, as I said, Mary Madeline will be on. She'll, we'll ask her about Hillary Clinton, ask her about John Boehner, ask her about the vote in the uh, House yesterday that Boehner allowed to take place on the uh, debt ceiling bill, and ask her oh so much more about her new book with her husband, James Carville. All that straight ahead right here on the Steve Malzberg Show on Newsmax TV. The Steve